Are you tired of watching boring old press releases? Then you've come to the right place, the right channel, the number one channel for CEO interviews and company overviews. Welcome to Rich TV Live. Subscribe to our channel and make sure to hit the like button on our videos to help with the YouTube algorithm. For more information and in-depth discussions and analysis, join our trading club at richpigsdaily.com. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications to get alerted when our next CEO interview is released so you can discover the next 10 bagger. Hi, how's everybody doing today? I am your host, Rich. Here we have a Rich TV Live with our very special guest, Matthew Reed, the CEO of AppLife Digital Solutions via Shanghai on the telephone today. How are you doing today, Matthew? I'm great, Rich. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. Very excited to learn more about your company. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with AppLife Digital Solutions? Okay. Um, I'm, I'm born and raised in New York. Um, I had been living out in LA for about 20 years and uh, was in the, working in the entertainment industry. And I made my way out to Asia, uh, raising capital for film and television. And while I was out here working on a couple of film projects, uh, I started getting calls from uh, people back in the States asking me for one particular favor repeatedly. Um, uh, my mother is, owns a store and she's buying a product and She's ordering it from a factory in China, and there are so many stories about fraud. Is there a way you can do us a favor? Can you just check to see before my mom sends $20,000 to this company that they're really there, that they're, they're, they're supposed to be near Shanghai somewhere? So at first I was okay, and I would sometimes get on a, you know, a subway or a train and go to the outskirts and look to see that it was there or you know, if I was working on, you know, a film deal with a, a group of lawyers, I would say, hey, I need a favor. Can you just tell me if this company is really operating and tell me if they're really in business? And they would go on the computer and, you know, check the state agency computers and see that they're, you know, a real operating entity. In Chinese, it's easy to see the real information. Um, and I was reporting back to people. And then eventually, I realized that this needs to be a service. And th this is actually something that a lot of businesses, small to medium sized businesses around the world would benefit from because they don't have the people on the ground that a company like Apple or Tesla do. They don't have the ability to have somebody that reads and writes Chinese. You're talking about like a jeweler in the middle of America that's about to order $10,000 worth of heart shaped pendants for her Valentine's Day sale. And she's going to send somebody 10 grand and to them, that's a lot of money. How do they protect themselves or how do they just know comfort comfort level that the people that they're dealing with aren't fraudulent and they're not just getting scammed online so we created a a, a little service called b2b chx and that's how app life was actually born that was the first um solution that we sort of put together and it was a it, we, we partnered with a law firm on the ground they do the background checks they're a certified licensed law firm in shanghai one of the biggest business firms in shanghai they do these checks they re do the research, they return like a one page Carfax report. And we were able to, I, a lot of my friends and then friends of friends and friends of friends were calling and asking for the service. And we, it wasn't even really about making money. We were charging 80 bucks for the, oh, wow. for the, for the report. It's like a one page Carfax and it gives you a lot of comfort. Now, if you want more detailed information, the law firm will go deeper. There's a $400 report, a $1,200 report, and you can get really deep uh, information. But that's sort of how AppLife was born. AppLife was the idea behind AppLife is just creating simple solutions for things in, in recreation, in business, um, you know, in daily life. And we thought, okay, this is just a simple solution. It's some, a way to use the internet and digital technology to take advantage of a, some, a way to, you know, service your business and prevent fraud or prevent getting taken advantage of. Or if you've been taken advantage of, get information to track down a company, get legal you know, information to say, to go after them if you had to. Um, so B2B CHX was born. We, we, we uh, 
uh, you know, we, we were operating it for a little while, you know, we weren't really doing any marketing, but we were just getting some word of mouth business. And then sort of the next project came to us and then the next one. And so we have a handful of, you know, in-house uh, projects that we've created that sometimes solve a single problem or a single issue uh, uh, for, for people. And, uh, and then we look to invest in or, uh, you know, own uh, by acquiring other companies that do have an e-commerce or in a cloud-based platform as well. So that's sort of what app life is. That's fantastic. You know, actually I could have used your service because we're getting into crypto mining and we found out that the cheapest crypto mining you can get is in China. And sure. we started researching and we found some that were like half price of what you would get here in North America. And we had the exact same problem. We're like, we need boots in the ground because if we're going to send a large payment to a factory in China that we have no relationship with, how do we know that we're not going to get, you know, run into some problems? So the yeah. fact that you actually are doing this is brilliant because myself and my partner, we've had some issues with some of the same concerns. So I actually think this is a really good idea. And that leads me into the next question. Can you sure. go through some of the milestones that were hit in the first six months of 2021 and what the main goals are for the last six months of 2021 for AppLife Digital Solutions? Well, in the beginning of the year, you know, we had we have three in-house projects and we started looking at a couple of acquisition targets um, in, in about... 10, 11 months ago, we signed a deal with the Maxim Group in New York. They're, you know, a great small cap investment bank. They bring a lot of companies up from the OTC and the OTCQB where we are up onto the NASDAQ. And um, we signed a deal with them that's threefold. And this was a big milestone for us, this agreement with them. One is they're giving us just advisory services. We have a weekly call, senior management participates, our, everyone on our side, they have a five, six people on their side, five, six people on our side. We go through, give them a rundown of what we're doing. We get advice from them, which is really fantastic. They have great, uh, you know, a bunch of great minds. It's always great to listen to, right? And you always want to hear good ideas um, and, and good advice. So that's one part of the deal. The second part of the deal is they're helping us um, find potential acquisition targets, right? They're helping us um, uh, uh, vet and also, you know, search out m as for us to possibly take over. Um, and the third part of the deal um, is they want to uplist us to the NASDAQ. So, you know, we've been working on all three parts of those of that deal. And that sort of is both answers to your question. It was the, about a year ago. And it's right now that we're just starting to get some acquisition targets uh, that we're, we're getting focused in on. Um, that, that are already generating some revenue. We have a very simple model for acquisitions. We want companies that are e-cloud, I mean, e-commerce and you know, cloud-based businesses. We want uh, uh, strong management that's not going to run away. We want them to stay on and keep running their company. We're not looking to kick them out and take over their business. We want to we want to take fifty one percent so we can book the revenue under our column, a revenue column. But we want them to continue operating the business and continue running the business. And we want to. Um, you know, make the acquisition with a little bit of cash and a bunch of stock. And we want them to ride the uplist and ride the take, have to go through the wave of the growth of, the, of, of app life as well. So, you know, we're starting to find, you know, a couple of companies every two, three months that we start vetting and going through and, and we go through them. And if we find reasons that they wouldn't be good public company partners, we move on to the next ones. You know, sometimes we find companies that, uh, you know, we, we look at for, for three months and, they don't, they don't have a good tax background. They don't have a good history of, of tax payments. And we don't want to be in, you know, in bed with a bad partner. So we move on to the next one. So we, we've been narrowing down targets. And, uh, and, and we hope by the end of this year to ma have made at least one acquisition on a company that is already generating revenue. Fantastic. Now here at Rich TV Live, we love to identify undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed opportunities and we love technology. We love hyper growth industries. And it's important to understand the team behind a company. And it's typically the team behind the company that is going to be able to lay a foundation of success. So in saying that, can you run us through the team at AppLife Digital Solutions and what each member brings to the team? Sure. Yeah. You know, one of the things that we're, we're really proud of at AppLife is the, is the team here. And 
the, you know, we, we, we kind of feel like we did this the right way. We built this correctly. We, we didn't, you know, back into a shell. We, we filed our own S1 a couple of years ago when we filed and we, uh, and we listed on the OTC on the pink sheets. And then immediately afterwards, we realized that for the credibility and in terms of negotiations and raising capital, we wanted to get off the pink sheets. So we uplisted to the OTCQB and, um, and, and so the foundation of the company is very strong and what goes really hand in hand in that is with the people that we have built into the team. Um, uh, you know, our board of directors is way above and beyond what we should have as a board for a company of our size. We have, uh, you know, one of our board members, uh, Sid is the is the former president of Paramount Pictures, a former chairman of Columbia TriStar. He he's um, he was on he was the president of the Motion Picture Association, the Oscars, uh, for four years. He uh, he's he's an advisor and board member on companies like Dolby and Nokia and um, and and AppLife Digital and Marvel and and other companies. But um, you know, having uh, a board member like that that has that kind of clout and uh, business history. Um, it, it gives us, uh, you know, somebody to lean on uh, in-house. Uh, another one of our board members, uh, Don Savant, Don uh, was the former number two or three man at IMAX Global. He, he was responsible for building the movie theaters around the world and um, in marketing and growing the chain. And um, he actually recently left IMAX and went to a new theater group. But Don is one of our board members. Tracy Gray, um, Tracy is actually, you don't really get to say that you work with an actual rocket scientist, but Tracy was a systems engineer on the space shuttle program. She wow. was writing doc, she was writing docking software and uh, she ended up going back to school and uh, becoming a dual MBA from Berkeley and from Columbia and uh, does a lot of Ted talks. She uh, runs a lot of women led business ventures and women led business speaking uh, engagements. Um, she, she was a, an advisor to the mayor of Los Angeles. She's a, one of those really dynamic people. Um, uh, on our fourth uh, independent board member is a gentleman named Richard Walden. Uh, Richard is one of those, another one of those really dynamic people. He, in the 1970s, he gave up his high paying international law job, partnered up with a bunch of Hollywood celebrities and formed a charity called Operation USA that was helping get clean water into Cambodia and Vietnam towards the tail end of the, the conflict and the war over there. And um, that has turned into a half a billion dollar a year charity with only a one in a less than a one and a half percent operating overhead. So for every dollar donated to Operation USA, 98.5 or more cents gets actually to the people on the ground. They, you know, it's not like the Red Cross. These are these guys are really good at what they do. Richard is a Nobel Peace Laureate. He's uh, he's a Wharton grad, a University of Pennsylvania law grad. Um, you know, I, I, educated, uh, well-educated board members, uh, great advisors, active participants, and um, the, those, those people right there are, are the initial foundation. Uh, the executive team, uh, the people I surround myself with, I always try to, I'm one of those people that says, you know, surround yourself with people smarter than you and it makes you smarter. And, uh, and, I, and I've worked hard to do that. We have a, um, a chief legal officer, uh, an in-house attorney, um, Michael Wheeler, who, uh, you know, who has been in companies like he's a securities attorney from Akin Gump and, and other, and other big firms in New York. Um, and, and he's in house and he's working with us just, you know, full time, just, uh, you know, to help launch this project. He believes in, you know, he's been with us since the start and he's been fantastic. We have a gentleman named Leslie Bernard, who I, I've known Leslie for 30 years. Um, Leslie is one of those guys from the, uh, that would be, had a little bit of a claim to fame in the, mid to late 1980s in New York City. He owned a lot of restaurants and bars that were very popular and well-known um, and clubs and things like that. And all the way up until the early 2000s, he was even in that industry. Um, Leslie is sort of our executive project director. And the reason that I wanted Leslie is because you know, he singly is one of those people that gets focused on a project. And I've watched him you know, with restaurants and bars, which are very similar to a tech project in terms of you build it out, you have a schedule, you have people, you have a team, you have to get things accomplished, you have to make orders, you have to have inventory, all those things. He knows how to manage that. He's, he's fantastic. He's also a, you know, a Georgetown graduate with a, a degree in finance. So when you add all that together and his initial job out of college was uh, an, as an analyst for Manufacturers Hanover Bank. Um, you know, so he's 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 our one of our daily operators. And um, uh, 
Um, uh, we have an a investor relations, internal investor relations person named Jody Jansen, who, uh, who just has a lot of experience. He owned a company called Investor Stock Daily, and he's been with us since the start also. And he's just another great voice and advisor for us. And, um, and, and, and for our CFO, you know, when I was originally going to hire a CFO, I was introduced to a gentleman named Joseph Hemi in New York, and Joseph uh, runs a company called CFO Squad. And at first, I was like, well, I could hire one CFO, or if I work with Joseph, I get his whole team. He's got 14 you know, uh, CPAs with specialty, everything from tax and, and public entities and filings and all different specialties in one office. And I would, you know, if I had a question that was outside the realm of of you know our daily operations, he had somebody to go to right in the office. So um, we we started working with CFO Squad, and we kept saying, "Well, we're going to hire." We had this, you know, we kept interviewing different CFOs. We like this guy. We like this guy, but nobody has been able to supplement or, or supplant the the team that I have there. So and and I've been working with them for three years, and I love the team. The the uh, the, the people we work with are great. Uh, so we, we have them uh, handling all of our books and our filings. And um, we have legal counsel, uh, SEC counsel, uh, outside of our internal counsel, uh, uh, Chase Chandler. We, you know, and we have all the uh, regular uh, public entity you know, uh, uh, vendors in terms of transfer agents and everybody on board that, we, that we've been with since the start. We, we really like the team we put together. And we, we, have a, you know, we believe in you know, working hard together and the loyalty and we we've you know we've had uh three and a half years of filings we've never filed late we've uh not a day uh on at, at any time um and so we're you know and the, the entire group works well together and that's one of the things that like i said we're really proud of I, um me myself um like i said i'm born and raised in new york city i went to nyu um my uh, uh, background was in marketing and, um, I, I got uh, out to LA working in the entertainment industry. And, uh, after 20 years in LA, I wanted something different. And uh, I decided that I was going to take what I was doing in the entertainment industry at the time, which was raising capital for film and television. And I, uh, decided that I was going to make a change and I came out to Asia and, uh, uh I was out here full time for a few years. And then I was going back and forth between, you know, Northern California and, and, and uh, China and Shanghai. And after a, a while and with COVID and becoming a little bit more difficult uh, to travel, I just decided to uh, post myself up over here a little bit more full time. And um, so, you know, there's the team. Uh, that's sort of how everything operates. You know, everybody's in the U.S. except for me. The company is a U.S. company. It operates in the U.S. Our businesses are built for the U.S. or global markets. You know, the, our in-house projects. Um, uh, you know, that's and that's that's so that's pretty much the. I think that answers that question. Fantastic. Now we love to understand how you pick the projects that you want to get involved with to build your portfolio to give sure. the best return to investors. So can you explain a little bit about how you make those selections for the companies you're looking to acquire? And where do you see the company's projected revenue in the next two years? Okay, well, so two parts there. So the first thing is how do we pick projects? The first thing when we build a project internally, we like we talked about earlier, we want it to be a solution. We want it to resolve a problem. We have B2B CHX, which does background checks on Chinese entities for small to medium businesses. That's a really easy business model. There's small to medium businesses all around the world. We didn't even have to try and determine a marketing plan for that company. China did it for us. They laid out the one road, one belt initiative on where they're going to go. And they're going to promote Chinese business and Chinese infrastructure and Chinese capital. And we're just following them around now. And we're just starting to market that business and put money behind it. Um, over the last you know, few months, we've just started to raise capital enough to start marketing some of these companies that we've had that have been generating a little bit of revenue or haven't been doing very much uh, that we've had in our portfolio. The other business I told you uh, we have is Rooster Essentials, which is in the men's grooming industry. Men's grooming three years ago was a $12 billion a year industry. You went into a supermarket, you saw one or two items that were particular for men. Um, now you see shelves and shelves of men's products uh, for men, all the big players and small little boutique players also. 
uh, have four men products. So what we wanted to create was sort of an e-commerce platform where men can go shopping efficiently and easily for stuff that they normally use on a daily basis. And then they could also set up like a subscription slash auto delivery on a product. So um, for example, I get a box every month and in my box every month is shampoo and soap and deodorant and toothpaste. Um, Cause those are the things I need every month, but every other month, the box also contains some razor blades um, and some hair gel and uh, some moisturizer with some SPF and um, every, and every third month, it contains a new toothbrush and a new razor handle because I like to change that every three months. And uh, every fourth or fifth month, I, it comes with a box of Q-tips in there. So every month I get one box and the contents vary depending on my selections. And now I don't have to go shopping or deal with it anymore. Men aren't like women when it comes to that type of stuff. I don't want to have to go shopping for product or hair care stuff. It's not something I, I have time for. Or I want to waste time looking for. So I can go do it once, spend about 10 minutes, click off what I need, how I want this every month, every three months, every four months, pay for it. It'll bill me automatically every month. And now it just shows up in my doorstep. So um, that would solve the problem for, that men that I felt that men had. Um, the, the, the third business model that we just completed and we're about to launch is called Office Hop. Office Hop, I think, is a, is a winner. Office Hop is uh, the easy way to put it. It's Airbnb for, for office space and meeting rooms. So if you are a, a law firm and you have in New York City and you have uh, 10 law offices and three conference rooms, but now you only have seven full-time attorneys coming in, so you have a couple of empty offices, you can now list them just like you would if you were had an extra bedroom or an investment property and you wanted to list it as on an Airbnb space. Restaurants can list their uh, let their empty private room in the back and they can list it as a lunch meeting. They can list a menu with it. They could say it holds 10 people for 350 bucks. 10 people get lunch. You have the room for three hours and Wi-Fi. Here's the menu. And here's, you know, so we, we've course sort of created this um, this platform. And uh, like I said, it's a, it's a sharing platform. We feel like it resolves a problem, especially right now with COVID, a lot of people working from home, sales teams aren't going into offices every day. They're going, they're meeting once a week somewhere. People are traveling. They don't have a place, place to work. They need a place to work privately. Places, shared desk places like uh, the WeWorks and the ServeCorps, they'll be able to list their spaces as well. Um, but uh, we're, we're expecting uh, um, to see that uh, people that have extra space, extra meeting room space, extra creative space, uh, they need a place to list it. And we believe that there's a market out there for it. So that's that problem. We made an investment in a company called Global Hemp Service, which uh, are, we're expecting them to launch their uh, business in the next probably 30 days. Uh, they supply hemp building material and textiles. Uh, either large format roles to designers or of, 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 of textiles or uh, hempcrete or hemp insulation materials, things like that. Uh, they supply out of China. They also offer, um, they're going to be offering uh, uh, carbon credits, whereas big companies right now can buy carbon credits easily. Smaller companies can't, don't know how to do that. You know, if you were like, hey, okay, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I have a business and we're and we're eating up, you know, we're, we're using a lot of plastic or we have a lot of waste and we want to do good for society. So we're going to, you know, buy $2,000 a month or $2,000 every two months for the carbon credits, you know, to give back. And we'll get a little notification and a certification about it. And hemp gets left in the ground somewhere and hemp's really good for the earth. And, you know, it recycles water and it cleans the earth and all that type of stuff. So we made an investment in that project. Um, and we, we will we will we have a minority position now, but as they start to generate more revenue, we'll take a majority position. We have the exclusive right to do that already. Um, and then we have a couple of other targets that we're looking at that that I, I probably can't talk about yet. Uh, that we've been in discussions with uh, you know our advisors, and we're reviewing paperwork, and we're doing a little background checking and vetting. And as we get closer to uh, you know making a move on them, then there'll be some more announcements. But this is really how we're going to grow quickly. So the first part of your question is answered. The second part is, what kind of revenue are we looking to get? When we start generating revenue, it's going to come very fast. Um, and we're going to keep growing very quickly because our in-house projects, yes, we expect to generate revenue. And we the idea of being entrepreneurs and starting new businesses and creating new business models is fantastic. 
but buying companies that are already generating revenue. The more we buy, the more valuable our stock becomes, the more valuable that stock becomes in terms of being able to buy bigger and more companies. So we will be able to start making bigger purchases, making them faster, um, uh, and uh, acquiring more revenue more quickly, you know, so in the next, you know, we might, we might acquire seven to $10 million in revenue in the next 12 months, but in the following 12 months, we might, we might acquire 25 to 30 million. And then the following 12 months, we might acquire 50 to 70 million. You know, our goal is at a hundred million dollars in revenue. Um, you know, I don't want to put a, a target date on that, but the, our goal is to hit that number in a relatively short period of time. And the, faster we go, um, uh, the, the bigger we get, right? The snow, it's a very big snowball effect with this business model. And that's sort of why people that have invested in us and supported us up until now believe in us because um, once, you know, as we start rolling it, the ball gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually, you know, we're playing a big boy game in a, in a little boy market. Um, and eventually we're going to get out of the, you know, off the OTCQB and move up to the NASDAQ and we're going to start growing at a much faster pace then. That sounds fantastic. And considering you guys are at only eight cents, this is going to give investors an opportunity to get in at the ground floor. If AppLife Digital Solutions were to compare itself to its competitors in the sector, what would you say sets you guys apart? You know, we're, we're two different business models pushed into one, right? We develop e cloud-based businesses and e-commerce businesses. And we, we have this acquisition part of, as being part of our model, this acquisition model. Um, really what sets us apart is the team. You know, the, the, the board and the, the executive team that we have for a small cap company, like I've said to, all, to everybody always, it's above our pay grade, um, but we are happy to enjoy the fact that we have them available for us. We're able to, you know, they participate, they advise us, they, you know, they, they, they admonish me when they think that I'm headed in the wrong direction and they, they push me, you know, harder when they want me to keep going in the direction that we're headed in. It's a, it's a fantastic group that we have. And, uh, um, you know, and, and um, I, I don't like to say in any way that I'm, I'm, I'm being the CEO, I'm another team member. Um, and I have, I've, like I said to you before, I've surrounded myself with, you know, some fantastic minds and uh, people with some great educations. And, um, and, and just as a product of that, I think that that's one of the, you know, things about our company that's going to give us, you know, lift off, really good lift off. You know, it's, you know, like you said, the company trading at like eight cents, eight and a half cents or something in that range these days. Um, it's, it's a unique position for us to be in trading at that level. We were trading in the early, in the low 20 cents range for about a year, um, uh, you know, low volume, but trading in the low twenties. And then our volume started to increase uh, and we were trading in the 14, 15, and then it picked up to about 18, 19 cents. It was trading around that range of, uh, a couple months ago. And uh, we filed an S1 and raised some capital. And uh, when we did that, we flooded the market with some shares. And that's what we're seeing the result of the prices. So, yeah, we kind of feel like it's a steal here. Um, people are, you know, people that we know that are calling us and, and, you know, other investors that have already come in before are coming back and they're buying more stock at this price because, you know, they're watching the company and they're saying, you, you know, you guys should be trading between 15 and 19 cents a share. Uh, this is not going to be too long term before we're off where we are and we're back up into that range. And, you know, as the volume starts to pick up again, we expect that the, the pricing will, will pick back up again also. Now, here at Rich TV Live, we are fundamental traders. We like to understand the fundamentals of the company. So let's talk about your share structure for our sure. viewers. How many shares does the company currently have issued outstanding? And how do you plan on attracting more institutional investment as, alongside more retail investors? Okay, so there's 135 or 136 million shares outstanding at the, at the moment. Okay. Um, uh, there is, we have an, another, you know, eight or 10 million shares available to us in an S1 that we had filed that we have not sold yet. Um, that we have been holding on to because we were watched, we flooded the market a little bit, like I said, a couple months ago. 
And uh, so we stopped selling the shares in the S1 because we didn't want to, you know, flood the market and have too many shares out there and watch, you know, di dilute it any further. Um, so we're just waiting until the volume picks back up and, uh, and the pricing picks back up. And then we have investors that have already been asking for the other shares um, uh, that, we, that we're holding. So there will be about 150, 155 million shares in the float in total when everything is said and done. Um, the, we have no, it's, it's a purely a, a common stock uh, a portfolio. We don't, we don't, we're not holding preferred shares or issuing warrants or preferred shares or anything like that uh, on the outside. It's a, what you see is what you get. It's very straightforward. And in terms of institutional capital, our, our deal with Maxim is going to take care of that. They, they already have institutional investors that are sort of filed up and lined up in order of how that, where they're going to go you know, to raise the 15 to 18 million or so that we're going to need at the time of the uplisting to the NASDAQ. Uh, when we make one or two acquisitions over the course of the next three to four months, uh, start generating a little revenue in our in-house projects. Uh, now that we're putting a little bit of money that we just recently raised into these in-house e-commerce platforms that we built. Um, and now that more revenue is starting to come in and We'll be generating a little revenue on our own, as well as possibly uh, making an acquisition. Uh, at that point, it will be the uh, the gasoline that Maxim needs to uh, uh, to to initiate the uplist, and that's where uh, the institutional capital will be lined up for us. Fantastic! If there was one thing you would want shareholders to know about At Life Digital Solutions today, what would that be? Hold on to your seats. Um, you know, we, we believe we have big things in front of us. And uh, like I said, the, the bigger we get, the faster we're going to grow. So uh, this isn't going to be one of those stock plays where people are going to come in and buy the stock here and then be able to get it here again in six months. You know, this is we're going to be looking out our you know, rear view window uh, very soon. And, uh, you know, and then in six months, we'll be looking back on that previous three months. And in a year, we're looking back on that previous six months. You know, we, we, we know that as we start growing, like I said, it's the model that we built is, is going to create a snowball effect and we expect to get, to get a lot bigger, a lot faster. Um, and that speed to pick up as we go. That sounds fantastic. Now here at Rich TV Live, we've got investors from all over the world that will see this video, see this interview. What is the best way for those shareholders to get in touch with you or the company if they have any questions? Uh, the email is really the easiest way, you know, info at applelifedigital.com. Um, they can, you know, go onto our website and fill out a contact form if they have questions, or they can contact our uh, IR team uh, who's listed on the, on the website on the investors page. Um, and they can, you know, uh, public entities aren't too hard to track down as I've learned. Uh, if anyone wants to, has a question or they want to ask, uh, we're, we're always open. We're uh, available to answer questions. And we do, we have somebody that responds to those emails. We pay attention to them. So uh, we're available. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Matthew Reed, the CEO of App Life Digital Solutions. Before we say goodbye to everyone who's watching, I must remind you that Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. We are investors just like you guys. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything that we talk about or discuss here on Rich TV Live. In saying it um, and in, in doing this interview, I feel like this is a company that is really undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed. Put on your watch list, put on your radar. Let's talk about it. This is Rich from Rich TV Live. If you like the video, please smash the like button, comment down below, share the video everywhere and subscribe. If you're not winning, you're not watching, we bring in the winners and we bring them to you first. Thank you for your time, Matthew. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much for having me. Hope to talk to you again. That is Matthew Reed, the CEO of App Life Digital Solutions, calling us from Shanghai, China. Thank you guys for watching. This is Rich from Rich to Be Live. Have a nice day, everybody. We'll see you soon.